a cyber modeler online lab where I'm going to demonstrate how to properly clean and maintain your airbrush. Now here is a relatively new Iwata HPB Plus airbrush that we were using for a demonstration earlier and this seems like the appropriate time to take it down and clean it and show you how to do so. So first I'm going to remove the handle. There's no need to remove this control nut. You can if you like, but since there's nothing back here that has gotten contaminated, we're good there. So I'm going to pull the needle out, take the retaining nut off, pull the needle, set that there because that is contaminated. Pull out the throttle pull out the body here and the throttle itself. Pull out the trigger, remove the mat. Air adapter, pull off the nozzle cover, and here is my handy dandy water airbrush cleaning kit, which has a number of things that are handy in here. But what I want to look at is this little gadget here, which is a variation of this wrench that comes with your airbrush, but you just get right in here like so and you can remove your nozzle. Now what I like about this tray is as I'm making things come off I have this ledge around the edges of this mat that will keep things from rolling away and getting out of control and feeding my carpet monster so everything stays in, pl in place nicely. So you can see here I've got a touch of paint and there's a touch of red where there's been a little bit of Loctite applied to that nozzle to keep it in place. Well, we're, we've defeated that, but that's the whole point. You want to take this nozzle out and clean it because you need to get in here and clean once in a while, too. So I'm going to take a wee bit of Windex, dump it right in here in this work jar, and I'm going to take another nice little gadget that comes with it, these really small brushes have a little in there and get inside this aperture and look at that there's all sorts of paint in here and you just come out so we'll just scrub away at this and it's getting thinner and thinner as we go you can see if you look in here if we have enough light the brush is actually reaching up into the area of the cup. I'm going to take a Q-tip, clean out the cup. Now you don't do, have to do this after every paint color change. You can just simply blow thinner through until your flow is clear and change color. If necessary, wipe down the needle. But when you're done for the day, you need to get all of this out because there's nothing worse than having to try and get a needle that is glued into the airbrush by dried acrylics back out again. I'll show you how to do that, but right, if you just go in here and clean on a regular basis, that should be the exception and not the rule. So we'll take this, wipe the needle down. Be good on this. Nozzle here. So we don't have anything but just some cosmetic cleaning to do here. If you go away for the weekend after the middle of in the middle of a project and you accidentally leave your airbrush slightly dirty and you come back and it is just absolutely gummed up take it apart like I just did here if you have an ultrasonic cleaner which I do 50 bucks on eBay drop it in there in the pieces and just let it go for three minutes and then do it just reassemble it as I'm doing here and you'll be fine it will clean just nicely so I'm going to put this nozzle back on just 
hand tight, but it doesn't it need to be torqued down tight. Really tight, that is. We are going to put this cover on so I don't damage the tip. Then I want to get the trigger. Down here, before I go, let me show you one more thing that tends to get overlooked with these airbrush cleaning jobs. There's a little valve tip down there. And if you don't do this every now and again, your trigger will act like it's jamming up. Take some fine tip needle nose and see the holes down inside your air valve and just unthread this out. And what you'll find inside is a simple pin valve and spring and that retaining nut. There it is. And that will come out this way if you want it, that little valve cover. But what I want to show you here is the super lube that comes with the new airbrushes and is available for all the older airbrushes separately. You just want to apply just a touch of it. On the needle. Just rub it on. Now, putting the seal back in first. that in first, then the spring. And the retaining nut, which I'm going to grasp like so. Carefully engage the thread. Don't cross thread it. Like that. There we go. And just work it back in. Now you've got a smoothly articulating needle, which we'll test and adjust here once we get the rest of this back together. So next goes in the trigger. Let's put the lever in back like that. There's a saddle that this sits in. And there, you can now push down on the trigger. Good move. Good solid movement there. Then we put in the interface to the needle here, and this little tip goes in and goes up like that against the brush. If you've had some airbrushes in the past from other companies, this was always separate and was a real pain in the butt to get in. And I dreaded cleaning my airbrush because of it, because it required me not to chew gum while I was trying to do the assembly. Carefully thread the needle into the interface. That holds the trigger in while I'm doing this. It's just getting all of this locked in, hand tightened. Okay, needle is free. Put the retaining nut on. Now the needle articulates. Put the handle back on. Loosen that up, and I can articulate that. Put the air. adapter on, grab an airline, and blow a little bit of a lot of airbrush cleaner through. Let me guess the bottle sealed, isn't it? Yes, it is. That's why I use 
different bottle of it around here someplace. But I'll go ahead and just use thinner. And there was a touch of paint left in the cup. But now it's clear. And it's ready to be set aside for the next use. Hope that is helpful. But that's how you can use your tools and keep them maintained for optimum performance. Have a good day.